Our next topic is NGAP, NG application protocol over end to interface. Let's get into the topic. In G Node B split architecture, these NG interfaces connect the CU to the 5G core network. NGC connects the CUCP to one or more AMF, whereas NGU connects the CUUP to one or more UPF. NGC also called as N2 and NGU called as N3 as per reference point architecture and NGC use NGAP protocol and NGU use GTPU protocol. We will discuss about NGAP protocol. NGAP protocol pointers, it include first, the protocol name NGAP is derived from the interface name NG with the addition of application protocol. Second, NGAP supports all mechanisms requires to manage the procedures between G node B and AMF. Third, NGAP also supports transparent transport for NAS procedures that are executed between the UE and the AMF. Fourth, NGAP does not have any version negotiation. It supports forward and backwards compatibility of the protocol by a mechanism where all current and future messages and IEs or groups of related IEs include ID and criticality fields that are coded in a standard format that will not be changed in the future. Fifth, NGAP is applicable both in 3GPP access and non-3GPP access integrated with 5GC. NGAP relies on a reliable transport mechanism and is designed to run on top of SCTP. Seventh, the key difference between NGAP and S1AP is that S1AP was designed only for 3GPP access, that is E U T R A N and not non-3GPP accesses. Eighth, NGAP is applicable to any access and defined in 3GPP TS 38.413 specification. Support for specific parameters related to non-3GPP accesses have been added to the protocol when needed. Ninth, N2 interface between G node B and AMF performs management functions. For example, NG setup, reset, error indication, and load balancing. Tenth, NGAP supports initial UE context setup functionality for establishment of an initial UE context at G node B. Eleventh, NGAP provides the UE capability information to the AMF during UE capability exchange. Twelfth, it also support PDU session setup, modification, and release for user plane resources. Thirteenth, paging over NGAP, providing the functionality to page UE within 5G core. Fourteenth, NGAP allows trace of active UEs. Fifteenth, UE location reporting and positioning protocol support. 16th, NGAP supports warning message transmission for emergency services. Next, we will discuss about types of services over NGAP. The signaling over NGAP provides following two types of services. First, non-UE associated service. These NGAP services are related to end to interface instance between G node B and AMF and used to establish the NGAP signaling connection between G node B and AMF, handle some overload situations and to exchange G node B and AMF configuration data. Second is UE associated services. These NGAP services are related to a UE and involve signaling related to procedures where a UE activity is involved. For example, at registration, PDU session establishment, deregistration, etc. Now next comes types of NGAP procedures. 
An elementary procedure is a sequence of interaction between the G node B and AMF and 3GPP specifications has defined two types of elementary procedure. First, request response procedure. In this type of procedures, the initiator gets a response from a receiver of the request indicating whether the request was successfully handled or not or a failure response. Second is no response procedures. These elementary procedures without does not expect a response from the receiver. These messages are used, for example, when AMF wants to only deliver a downlink NAS message. There is no need for G node B to provide a response in that case since error handling is handled on NAS level. Some elementary procedures are specifically related to only non-UE associated services, for example, NG setup request or response, while others are related to only UE associated services, for example, PDU session establishment. Even there are some elementary procedures may be using either non-UE associated or UE associated signaling depending on the scope and the context. For example, Error indication procedure that uses UE associated signaling if the error was related to a reception of a UE associated signaling message while it uses non UE associated signaling otherwise. Here I conclude this topic. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.